There's a place, a school, an institution where a professor resides. One that for the past 30 years has traveled the world teaching others. A pioneer in America of the fighting science of savant. One who codified the sports of this fighting style. One who has produced clubs, champions, and continues to develop. Listen to work. Hey guys, it's back on Monday, starting a new week. Hope everybody had a great weekend. And I want to wish everybody a great, prosperous week. Very positive. Do training, pondering what, what you're training on, why you're training, what's going to go on with your goals within the training and within the martial arts, within whatever martial arts that you're doing out there. Because I know I'm reaching a lot of folks that, that do other martial arts besides dance through Savat or Kempo or Capoeira. Um, so those are the ones that I actually teach, you know, I practice others and, um, have instructorships and others, but those are the ones that I really teach. Okay. And, uh, for, for many reasons, um, the question that was asked, is very simple. How do you know if it's a trained fighter? Jeez. Only if you have experience within fights whether controlling it, being a doorman, seeing how many how fights arise, being a security guard, or being in fights in yourself. There's, there's that element that you need to understand. Uh, things change as we grow. You know, schoolyard tussles, where before it became a headlock and they'll pop you around, have now become iron bars and choking out. In fact, we had some kid already pass out. And I think he died in one of the states due to the grappling craze and the ground to pound kind of issue. Those things is, exist. <clears throat> so age differences before, you know, you're a kid up to 10 years old, then you have a preteen, then you have teenage. They change in the way the mindset is, the thinking. When you become a young adult and start going out, you're going to start seeing a little bit more because a lot more people are going to start seeing, you know, some guys like to go to nightclubs, bars, try to pick up women. And guess what happens? You're going to find fights in there. I guarantee you. So many people out there train in martial arts in various styles. There's uh, combative schools. There's fighting schools. There's schools that teach you for martial arts as a hobby. <clears throat> So the question, how can you tell if a, if it is a trained fighter? I'm going to break it into three folds, into three categories. A combative fighter that does savat, box, thai, muay thai, MMA, boxing, kickboxing for the ring. That's a trained fighter. Okay, I'm going to put that in there. Um, you're, I'm going to put you in there into the martial artists. And what I'm saying about martial artists, I'm talking about the martial artist that's in there for as a hobby, just doing it just to become a little bit of ego, to know that they know a little bit of something or other, just trying to get that, pacify that fear that they have. Talking about that martial artist, the martial artist that, that goes to a chopping block school in the corner and is learning all these techniques that are basically not going to help them do anything but just build their ego and their self-esteem. And that type of martial artist, they also frequent a bar. And I'm going to use a bar scenario. That's usually where you're going to get, the, or a nightclub, bar, bar and grill type scenario, because that's basically where you're going to get more, more of your fights at, especially these days. Okay. Um, then you have your street fighter, the guy that grew up dumping others because he had to go to the, across another neighborhood go to school, on his way to school, on the way back. And the guy, the inner city kid that grew up with gangs around him, that's a street fighter. Do those do martial arts as well? Yes, they do several. They do a lot, basically. But we're going to take each one and how one can tell. Okay? And uh, let's take it this storyline. 
you're having a beer at the bar or a drink at the bar, you talk to some ladies and all of a sudden you're approached by somebody who says, hey, I want to talk to your girl or what have you, the ex-boyfriend or whatnot. How can you tell them the person's a fighter, a seasoned fighter? Well, I'm going to take a fighter, a combative one, the one that does combative sport, and how his profile would look. Number one, most likely he's not going to have long hair. Why? Because they know that hair gets tangled up in the hands. They bring you down to the floor, and then you get shoe shy. That's number one given. If they go and they battle in wrestling, combative wrestling, or wrestling and or sport, com competition type, serious combativeness type, you're gonna uh, or boxing, someone will have cauliflower ears. Boxers, flat nose, saboteurs. Every so often you get one with a flat nose because they didn't put their hands up. You've got scars on the face, you'll notice that. You're gonna see a physique with broad shoulders, a type of walking, a sway to the walk, a confident walk. But that confident walk can also come from the street fighter as well, and as well as the martial artist. It's not gonna be a clumsy walk. It's not gonna be a goofy walk. It's not gonna be one that's like a Homer Simpson type walk. Understand, it's gonna be a, a sure walk that you're gonna see in there. There's a difference between an egoistic walk, a conceited walk, and one that's sure of himself, okay? Um, then you're gonna start seeing are the knuckles. You know, how, are the knuckles, uh, are they hard, are they hardened? Do they have, are they calloused? Mine used to be, kind of still do that. Does he have big mitts? Does he have scrawny little hands? Does he have muscular tone to his arms? Okay. A lot of these guys that you see picking fights, you know, they have hands and they wear, you know, little bitty girl hands. Ain't going to happen. Start looking at the whole physique. Okay. Then you start looking at, from there, then you start into the secondary phase. Now we're getting into the confrontation phase. Where is he? He's in front of me. Where's he looking at? Okay. Um, is he posturing? Most martial artists will posture. About 90% of the martial artists out there will actually show you their fighting stance before they get into a fight. I guarantee you, I guarantee you've seen it too many times. If they do a Japanese form of karate, they're either going to go into a back stance, front stance, or go into a cat stance. Kung Fu the same way. Okay, if they're young at kickboxing, they're going to try to get up there, they're going to pick up their hands. If they're a young martial artist inside, they're going to posture what they've done doing. Okay. Now, if he's a trained fighter and he's young, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to stand sideways, almost in a guard. He might even see fixing the fist on, at you when he's in front of you. He's doing this. So pay attention to all that because those posturing steps would lead to the fight. But a combative fighter and a street fighter will not posture. The street fighter, before he gets up to you or while he's getting to you, he already has picked a target. And when he's in front of you, he's standing sideways, which is the difference between a street fighter and a combative fighter, is a combative fighter is going to go in there and he's going to stare you down and he's going to have all his weapons forward for you. Why? Because he's sure of himself that he can hit you, move a little bit fast. Understand? Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So you have to see that. Now, once you start looking at your face, start looking at your jaw, start looking at your face, start looking at your stomach, start looking at your face, start looking at your, at your legs, they're already picking targets. That happens with the martial artist. Then the martial artist will go into a stance. And if he's going to kick, he's going to start pulling up his pants for him to get a little slack. The kick to come off. Well, a combative fighter won't. The trained fighter won't. The one that's been in the ring season, he's not. He's going to look right up at you. He's going to be there. 
more than likely he's looking through you. He's not looking at your eyes, more likely he's looking right here because here's where on the shoulder collar areas where you can see all the body. Not only that, you can see peripherally. So that's that's where a trained fighter is going to be using. A street fighter won't. A street fighter might get sideways, put his head down because he knows he's already going to get into that fight. That fight mode. Well, the martial artist won't. Martial artists might even go back into ego, stick up his chest. You know, I know how to fight. Wow, what are you going to do about it? No. If you see somebody sticking out their chest, going out there, putting this, well, that's an intimidation factor. They don't know how to fight. You actually want somebody to be there. Okay. All the nitty gritty is right down the side, straight down the pipe. Now, I'm not here telling people to fight. I'm here telling you all to understand how we fight begin. You have to look at a lot of things. You have to look at clothing. What kind of shoes are you wearing? If, if he's wearing preppy slacks with preppy shoes, all nice and tidy, probably the guy probably doesn't even know how to fight. But if the guy's wearing steel toe shoes, combat boots, and he's going to a bar, he's running, he's, he's going in there because he has an other intention. So guess what? I can't carry a knife in here. I can't carry a gun in here. I'm going to carry stuff that I can use to defend myself. Be careful. Okay? Tennis shoes the same way. Um, I don't condone fighting. I don't condone people training, going out there and beating people up. That's not, that's my, not my game. That's not my name. But I also do not condone people to be cowards and when picked on, slide back and look down. Okay? I also don't condone that as well. Um, there's, keep the questions coming. Keep training. Remember, keep training. Keep conditioning yourself. Something that a lot of people training in martial arts and so on and so forth, they stop conditioning themselves. You have to condition your hands. But guess what? Inevitably, if you get in a fight, your hands are going to hit a face. It's a lot of bone structure inside. Condition. Condition your hands. A lot of people say, I'm going to palm them. Everything's going to be fine. I'm going to back fist them. Everything's going to be fine. Oh, keep thinking that way. I'm going to kick them. Everything's going to be fine. Condition. Practice your kicks. Practice your punches. Hit a heavy bag for strength. Focus mitts. For accuracy. Remember that. Focus mitts for accuracy. A lot of people want to use focus mitts for strength, for accuracy. Heavy bags for strength. Speed bags for conditioning your shoulders and your forearms. Stamina, keeping your hands up. Understand that? Again, subscribe, hit the button. It was a great question. It was one that, that uh, takes me to bring out the experiences that I've had, the tutelage that I've had by my many instructors. Some of them were bone rollers, some of them were sidewalk thumpers, and some of them created sidewalk thumper, you know, and uh, believe me, experiences both fighting in the street and understanding security and understanding working at clubs and working security in other places, you kind of start building this uh, profiling if you want to say that because I, I hate that word but that's basically what happens you have to start analyzing the attackers of how they are until next time much peace
Academy 956-401-4868 Savat.biz